Good morning, everyone. Welcome to worship from Erdington Methodist Church for this Sunday morning. Our call to worship is taken from, based on Psalm 98. Sing to God a new song, for God has done marvellous things. Make a joyful noise to God, all the earth, for God is still doing marvellous things. Break into joyful song. Sing praises with lyre and melody and trumpets. Let the seas roar and the floods clap their hands, for God is coming to judge the world with righteousness. God is coming to judge the world with equity. Sing to God. A new song. We bring our prayers to God now. God of songs and marvels, old and new, your powerful love for this world continues to astound us. In these last days of Easter, we gather to recall the love that brought Jesus into the world and into our lives, as saviour, as friend, as brother. We thank you for welcoming us into your household and for trusting us with your marvellous work to draw all people into the spacious home of your love. Amen. And now our prayer of confession. Jesus, friend and brother, you taught us to abide in your generous love for it completes our lives and gives us joy. You ask us to love others as you have loved us, for it brings your creation to fruition. We sometimes struggle to love the people in our lives as you have loved us. So forgive us, we pray, and teach us to love again. Long ago, Jesus said to his disciples, I have called you friends because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from God. You did not choose me, but I chose you. Jesus speaks those words today, 
Jesus forgives us and chooses us to be his friends, sharing his great work of love. Amen. The Gospel of John, chapter 15, reading verses 9 to 17. I love you as the Father loves me. Remain in my love. If you obey my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have obeyed my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My commandment is this, love one another just as I have loved you. The greatest love a person can have for his friends is to give his life for them, and you are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer because the servant does not know what his master is doing. Instead, I call you friends because I have told you everything I have heard from my father. You did not choose me. I chose you and have appointed you to go and bear much fruit, the kind of fruit that endures. And so the father will give you whatever you ask of him in my name. This then is what I command you. Love one another. Thanks be to God. The first letter of John, chapter 1, reading verses 1 to 5. Whoever believes that Jesus is the Messiah is a child of God, and whoever loves a father loves his child also. This is how we know we love God's children. It is by loving God and obeying his commands. For our love of God means that we obey his commands, and his commands are not too hard for us, because every child of God is able to defeat the world. We win the victory over all the world by means of our faith. Who can defeat the world? Only the person who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. Holy wisdom, holy word. Although Easter Sunday is past, we are still in the season of Easter. And the lectionary helps us to go back over some of the events of the Passion and Easter itself 
and in particular, focus on the words and teaching of Jesus and not just his actions. When we ponder the Last Supper, we often reflect on the meal or the foot washing. But in John's account, Jesus expends an awful lot of time talking about commandments. When he said, if you keep my commandments, you abide in my love. I wonder what did the disciples infer that this meant for them. In one sense, Jesus' commandments would have been identical to the commandments that are found in the Torah, the Old Testament, but now he gives them greater depth. No adultery, but Jesus says, do not look even with lust. No killing, but Jesus says, do not get angry. Love your enemy, give up your coat, find the lost sheep, welcome the prodigal home. Don't be smug about your religiosity. Take up your cross. Lose your life. All this reflects Jesus' love. When Jesus speaks of love, it's not a vague love. It's not a generalized goodness or niceness in our lives. It's something much more radical, something much more full-bodied. The modern Christian writer Cavan Rowe says, human life is just too hard to have a boring Christianity. When your life is falling apart, you don't want to come to church to talk about how nice the flowers were, or to sit and listen as people talk over you to make arrangements to meet for coffee sometime during the week. But Jesus isn't wagging a finger telling us that if we love him, we must behave ourselves. He tells us to love him so that our joy may be complete. The Greek word which we translate nowadays as complete is plerote, that gives us our English word plethora. It means full, and more than full, overflowing, Jesus did not say, do this and you will be swimmingly happy or it will be great fun. Joy is deeper and richer and much more sustainable in dark days. Joy is undefeatable by circumstance. If it feels like a pressure to be joyful, then we've missed the point. Joy is a gift. It's a fruit of the Spirit. And abiding in the love of Jesus, there it is, joy. This gift of joy you discover when you're not fixated on yourselves, but rather you look beyond yourselves to Jesus. Sadly, many churches have become mostly joyless as have we ministers at times. We become fixated on process, structure, and what we deem success. Perhaps the recovery of joy as a thing in preaching and in church life is the secret to Christianity not appearing to be dull to the wider world. But then Jesus goes on to tell his disciples that if they obey his commands and abide in his love, then he will call them friends. Verse 15 says, Do I no longer do I call you servants, but I have called you friends. Up to this moment, Jesus had given the disciples good cause to think of him as Lord or as God, word incarnate, light of the world, saviour. This utterly magnificent, inspiring divine one now invites them to see him as a friend. What could he mean? For us, a friend might be someone you have fun with, someone who likes what you like, someone like you, someone who's easy to be around. But sometimes those friendships can be a bit thin. Often we can hold back from going very deep, 
not wanting to risk disagreement. So we stick to chatter about food or football or hobbies. Or we find our way into little enclaves of people who agree with us, echo chambers for our bias, feeding our narcissisms. Isn't it true that if you only hang around with people like you, you can become ignorant and arrogant? The ancient philosophers like Socrates defined a friend as someone who helps you to become good and wise. Aristotle wrote that the opposite of a friend is not an enemy, but a flatterer. And from St. Augustine to Soren Kierkegaard, Christian thinkers have thought of friends as those who help you to love God and whom you help to love God in return. You often can become the people you befriend. Friendship can be very formative in our lives. And if Jesus is your friend, you become like him. Touching the untouchable. Seeing through fake religiosity, you become prayerful, generous and ready to lose everything to do the Father's will. The secret of the early Methodist vitality was that John Wesley insisted that people get organised into small groups to share in the quest for holiness. We need friends around us who care about us and who dare to cultivate wisdom and holiness. To hold one another accountable for progress towards Jesus our shared friend. Jesus explained why he would be calling the disciples friends. For all that I have heard from my Father, I have made known to you. True friends, true Christ-centred friends, share the gospel's knowledge together. They are learners Encouraging one another to, onto more expansive understandings of the heart of God. Aelred of Rivo, a 12th century Cistercian monk, said to his friend Ivo, Here we are, you and I, and I hope a third, Christ is in our midst. What would it be like if Christ the third were at the heart of all your friendships. Whom would you then be called to befriend? If Jesus, the befriender of the scandalously diverse ragtag bag of people he came across, is our friend, who does he call us to be friends to in return? G.K. Chesterton wryly declared that St. Francis liked everybody, but especially those, of, those others disliked him for liking. When Jesus is our friend, we celebrate differences with our other friends. Do we disagree? Sometimes. And instead of drifting away, we, the friends of Jesus, should work towards reconciliation. Martin Luther King's insight, love is the only force capable of transforming an enemy into a friend, makes me wonder sometimes how many friends I've missed out making. So what are these habits of friendship and friendship in Jesus Christ? Well, friends eat together. and We dine with Jesus at the Lord's Supper and hopefully at all our meals with our friends. And it's there that we can open up and become vulnerable. Friendship is also encouragement. Jesus says we should never be discouraged. And the tenderest way Jesus, our friend, alleviates our discouragement is when he sends another friend alongside us to encourage us in those difficult moments. And friendship is sacrifice. Jesus, the best friend ever, said, 
Greater love has no one than to lay down their life for their friends. And then he went out into the night to be arrested, tried and crucified for us, his friends. Amen. And so we come to our prayers of intercession. Let us pray. God of all creation, you hold the depths of the earth in your hands. You are closer to us than the air we breathe. Fill our souls with your wonderful love and light. Give us strength and courage to reflect that love and light in the world. Let us never shrink back from who we are in you or hide our light inside ourselves. Renew in us a sense of joy, painting the dark shadows around us with your light, your love and your salvation. Hear us today as we pray for a world too often darkened by hatred, evil, power and greed. Within our darkest night, let your light shine. God of power and might, your broken world cries out from the depths. A world dominated by the darkness of war, terror, pain and suffering. We think of all those places in the world that are still in conflict, where one group seeks power over another. We share the pain and anguish of those who have had to flee from their homes, countries and livelihoods, who risk their lives, desperate for a new start 
free from fear and war. May they see your light, feel your strength and power, and know the truth of your promise, that we shall not be overcome by the dark shadows of life or the darkness of human nature. Within our darkest night, let your light shine. God of compassion and grace, we share with you our love and concern for people in a dark place today. We have on our hearts the friends and loved ones of the victims of violence and hatred. And we pray for all those who struggle with their mental health. We pray that they will find your strength in the compassion and love of those around them. We pray for tolerance in our society. We pray for those who are persecuted through no fault of their own. Let your light shine through the darkness of all their pain and their suffering. Within our darkest night, let your light shine. God of life, we ask for your healing power on those who are enduring pain and illness. We especially think of the people of India as they suffer from growing numbers of those catching coronavirus and growing numbers of deaths. And we pray for all those who we name quietly in our hearts. We share the grief of people close to us who've recently lost loved ones. We remember that as we weep with the grieving, we embrace the joy of your love. And we know your everlasting light shines within us in moments of great sadness and great joy. Within our darkest night, let your light shine. God of love and hope, renew in us a deeper sense of who we are in you. Help us to be aware of your presence each and every day. Make us instruments of love and praise. May our words, actions and lives be living examples of your forgiving, healing, life-giving love. We ask all these things through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Jesus speaks again today. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. So go in joy and faithfulness, knowing that you, the chosen friends of Jesus, abide in Jesus' love and bear the gifts of his love into this, our world. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with us now and always. Amen.